Today for Mousetrap Monday, I'm going to show you a primitive survival trap that I recreated from a book that was written in 1881 titled Camp Life in the Woods and Tricks of Trapping and Trap Making. In that book, there are so many different trap designs. I've been recreating one a week on my YouTube channel, so if you want to see some of the past traps, I'll put the link in the description below. Last week, we featured a spring snare box trap and we were able to catch a squirrel. Well, this works on a snare too, but it works in a different way. This is called the garrot. Basically, the word refers to strangulation. It was used as a form of execution. Also, a garrot wire is a thin wire with handles on either side. That was used in World War II to kill the enemy silently. It's the old spy James Bond thing where you have a wire, pull out the watch, choke someone. But in this case, we're gonna to refer to the snare to catch animals. Now, the force for this trap comes from leverage. We have a lever stick here on a Y stick. On the short end, we have the snare, and on the long end, we have a weighted rock tied to the stick. That provides quite a bit of force. It's amplified as you go down. The longer the stick, the more force. You can see how this works. So I'm gonna do a close-up on the bait station. Now, normally you'd make this in the wild. All you need is some string and a knife or a saw. You can make this trap. You can scale it up to catch large animals or scale it down to catch smaller animals. We're gonna go for rats and squirrels. Now, I can't show you how to do this in the wild where you pound the sticks into the ground. Trapping is strictly regulated. Primitive traps are not legal in my area. There are seasons, you need a license, but indoors, you don't need that. So I built a model that I can take inside the barn and catch rodent pests. Since you see how this leverage in the snare works, let's do a close up on the bait station in the trigger system so you can see how that works. We have our snare wire here and below it, we have our bait station. It consists of a series of sticks that are pounded into the ground. They form a barrier so the animal has to enter through the front. Right in the middle of the sticks, we have a stick that has a notch in it, down low. That's part of the trigger system. In the front here, we have some cross pieces, one up high, that holds the upper trigger stick, and then down low, we have two cross pieces, and in between, that's where you put the snare. So the animal has to come in, put its head through the snare, and then it pulls the trigger, this goes up, and you got them. Now here's the first of the two trigger sticks. It has a hook, this is where a branch Ys, and that hooks right into the top stick, right here. This keeps it from going up. You can see how that fits. Now you also need a stick in back that holds this and keeps it from going up. That's what this stick is. It has a notch on bottom that fits in with that bottom notch stick and it has a groove to fit the top. You hook the notch in the bottom and then in the groove here, you put the back of the lever stick. There'll be upward force on this and when the animal comes in and pulls it, it'll go flip around and the snare will go up. So I'll go ahead and set this and show you how it works. You pull down the snare with the lever stick and run that snare between those two cross sticks. This has quite a bit of force pulling it up. Now you hook your lever stick in the hook and pull it around. And with this, you're really using leverage to your advantage. In the back, it does not take much pressure to hold the stick down. The third part of setting this is hooking in the notch in the bottom and holding the back of the stick in that groove. Now you also need to dress the noose. You just want to be sure your fingers are clear if this goes off. Now the trap is all set. The animal will come along, want to get the bait, put its head through the noose, pull on that stick, close up, and you got him. Now I'm sure some people are curious if this actually works. It's pretty sensitive. Let's go set this up in the barn with motion cameras and see if we can get a rat or squirrel with the garrot snare trap. Last night we set up the garrot snare trap out in the barn and we caught a big old squirrel. The squirrel wanted to get the bait, went in there, pulled the trigger, released the lever, and this lever has so much force with that rock on the end, it lifted up the cable and caught that squirrel. Learning how to make survival traps is a very important skill. With a knife and some rope or string, you can make this trap and you can scale it up to catch larger animals or scale it down to catch smaller animals. And most of the material you need to build this trap is already in the woods. When it comes to these kinds of traps, I have to be very selective in the footage that I show on YouTube. If you want to see the full sequence of this trap in action, I'll list it on my website. I'll put the link in the description below. That book from 1881 is full of different trap designs, and I'm going to keep featuring one a week for the near future. I'm posting between four and five rodent trap videos a week, so if you want to see how to catch mice, rats, squirrels, chipmunks, moles, voles, and gophers, stay tuned.